Hi, this video is a part of deep learning with TensorFlow playlist. In this playlist, I quickly explain the logic and implementation of deep learning algorithms and applications using TensorFlow. Note that I do not code along, rather I make use of pen for explaining the tricky parts of code so that you people can read the notebooks and Python files and re-implement them yourself. Code files for each of the video will be given in the description. So I'm expecting my audience to have good understanding of deep learning and they just need little hints for implementation of deep learning algorithms using TensorFlow. In this video, I'll talk about CIFAR 10 image classification using convolutional neural networks. And finally, at the end, we will also look at the visualization of CNNs using gradient classification activation maps. Let's understand this idea on whiteboard and code it in notebook. Okay, so today our task is basically image classification. And this task is basically known, well known with the name of CIFAR 10, where we have 10 different classes to classify. And we'll be using convolutional neural networks. As we know, in regular neural networks, we have input layer, we have hidden layers, and then we have output layer. So each of these layer is are like very densely connected. So that's why each of this layer are also called dense layers. Now, uh, in neural network, as we know, we go in forward uh, direction, which is called forward propagation. So this is just like uh, having different weights and biases and these weights and biases multiplied and uh, after activation function we get output and this output is kind of an input for this layer then again with weights and biases this is linearly these all are line, linearly combined and then activation function so this is how forward propagation works whereas in backward propagation we find out the error and error is back propagated for each of the parameter whether that could be weight or that could be bias and we adjust these weights and biases in such a way to reduce the error so that is how uh, this neural networks work now that we as we have already known it uh, the special about convolutional neural network is that if we look at the image so image consists of basically pixels so if each of the pixel is considered a single feature single input feature then uh, we are not making use of this special property of image and that is what is the special property of image images that sing, given this single pixel the single pixel is not alone it has some relationship to this neighboring are closed by uh, pixels so to capture this real kind of a relationship this is a very intuitive and top level understanding of cnns we make use of these convolutional layers and pooling layers so in convolutional layer we we do this uh, in, in this convolutional operation uh, and in pooling layer, uh, we do pooling and there are different ways of pooling, max pooling, average pooling. So I'm expecting that you know about all these things. So uh, in in normal, simple backpropagation neural network, uh, what we have is uh, these layers, we are we, we are calling these layers dense layers. But in CNNs, we will be calling these layers convolutional layers. And then we'll also call uh, pooling layers. Okay, so in TensorFlow, if we have to encode these uh, neural networks, so tensor, TensorFlow basically creates graphs. So then what we do is uh, we have these this input layer. This input layer is then given as an input uh, and we add a convolutional layer above this input layer. So or call it a below. So we have input then below this input we have con layer and be below this con layer we have pooling layer and below this pooling layer we have dense layer. So this is basically a general way of representation representing CNNs in TensorFlow. So uh, we are not concerned with uh, the detailed uh, detailed implementation. We just have to uh, create this to create a function. So these all are functions. So once called this function, this function will just uh, create this convolutional layer, and then we will also call a function to add this convolutional layer on the top of or under below, or, uh, whichever analogy makes sense to you, uh, over this like uh, input layer. So uh, this con layer uh, comes after this input layer, and this pooling layer will come after this con layer. So this is like what we call a sequential uh, sequential movement from input to output so in forward propagation what we do is we just simply uh, give uh, this input data so this input data is manipulated itself by the tensorflow because we have already defined this graph so in the te inside tensorflow this input data is given to this con layer all the operations of forward propagation are are executed and this con layer gone to pooling layer and then dense layer and then we, we will also uh, we will also uh, set these error function these optimization function and other hyperparameter details and once we set that so given the error and optimization function and all the values that we have already set uh, this tensorflow will do automatic differentiation uh, and take derivatives with respect to the, uh, the, the with respect to weights and biases and will adjust these weights and biases in the backward propagation automatically so in a way we just have to uh, define the graph once defined we just execute it it is as simple as it is so finally we have these visualizing convolutions where we want to find out uh, the, the, the the parts of image parts of image responsible for specific type of output so we want to find out 
we want to interpret this convolutional neural network in a way the official name or uh, the technical name for that process is what we call gradient classification activation maps so what we do is we uh, like in crux look at the weights so how we do it we store the weights for each of the layer and uh, we look at the convolutions uh, basically uh, once we look at the convolutions or what we call is uh, that after giving an input image and that input image is once gone through uh, in feed forward fashion from the CNN up to a specific uh, layer convolution which we want to visualize then we will look at the uh, activations so activation function that is uh, that is applied there so looking at those activation values we will create kind of a color map so that color map will be uh, a representative of uh, of what we call uh, that color map will be actually uh, interpreting the underlying working interpreting the underlying working of this cnn so we will see that in detail so let's jump to the code and understand it there okay so we begin by importing the necessary libraries then we import this cfr10 data set uh, which has training samples of about 50000 and image uh, image uh, dimensions are uh, 32 32 by 3 so uh, test samples will be 10000 so we have 10 number of classes and these are the number of classes and then we show random images uh, and uh, after showing these random images then we normalize the data by dividing by 255 because the minimum value is 0 and the maximum value is 255 and once we uh, divide it by 255 so the value is equal, is actually between 0 to 1 then we subtract the 0 0.5 uh, so that to mean it around 0 so this is like normalization part so the, then what we will do is we will convert this data set into a categorical data set so we have uh, different uh, categories uh, for each of the class uh, after that then what we will uh, import is uh, from tensorflow.keras.models we will import this sequential uh, sequential module so what we will do in this sequential module is that we will uh, we will call this function so uh, based on this function we will be able to add different layers one after the other in sequential form from layers we will be uh, we will be importing this con 2d max pooling flatten is actually uh, converting this con 2d layer into a dense single flatten layer that we know about so it is like a so it is not in a single dimension this con 2d layer but uh, after flattening it uh, we get uh, a single dimension layer so then then we have a dense layer and then we have also uh, we apply activation function on the dense layer but here uh, we can also call that activation uh, as a single separate layer so uh, the layer output could be just a linear combination of previous layer and then we apply separate activation function okay then we have a dropout for regularization purpose then we have a leak, leaky relu uh, uh, layer this is again uh, one of the activation function that we could use okay then this is the function to create a model that we will be applying so the model is basically a sequential model uh, and the model basically has what we call after input so what we will add after input is this convolutional layer having same padding and filter of 3 comma 3 and this will be the input shape that will be uh, that will be going uh, before this con 2d layer so the input uh, input image will be having this shape now what we will apply is leaky relu layer then con 2d again uh, for the first layer we have to specify the input shape other than that we don't have to specify this input shape then after max pooling we apply the dropout then again we apply this con 2d leaky relu con 2d leaky relu max pooling and dropout so this is kind of a architecture one architecture of convolutional neural network there are different combinations of neural networks which can be used okay so finally then we flatten it uh, after flatten it so we this is a simple neural networks in front of this convolutional neural networks so dense layer having 256 neurons uh, and then we apply this activation function of leaky relu having this uh, 0.1 as a hyperparameter then drop out of 0.5 then again dense layer this is a final output layer we're having 10 classes then we apply the activation function of softmax because we want to do multi-class classification and uh, once we do it uh, we return this model okay so this is like initial learning rate we have the batch size we have number of e epochs for which we want to uh, run this algorithm these are initial conditions and then what we will do is uh, we will uh, from tensorflow.python.framework we will uh, clear that we will uh, reset the default graph so that for for, for uh, freeing up any memory so uh, once we do that then we create a model by calling that function and then we look at the summary of this model so this summary will contain uh, all of these layers and for each of the layer the number of parameters that has to be learned by the neural network so the first layer contains uh, the output of first layer will be of this shape none means number of samples so wherever there is none so it means here uh, depending on the number of samples uh, the none will be filled okay so for the con 2d layer we have 448 layers after uh, con 2d layer we have these much of uh, 4640 uh, uh, what we call 
um, uh, parameters to learn uh, and this is how we move on one after the other and finally we have total these much of parameters and we could also set some of the parameters untrainable or not trainable and that is what we will see in transfer learning video uh, in future uh, but all of these are for now are trainable parameters okay then we compile this model by giving a loss function we want to calculate the loss categorical cross entropy we want to minimize this categorical cross entropy because we are dealing with multi-class classification and then we will define this optimizer and we are using adam x uh, multiplier uh, uh, optimizer having learning rate uh, uh, as explained then we are looking at the metric of accuracy so once we have compiled it then this function of learning rate, rate scheduler is basically taking epoch as an input and adjusting learning rate as as uh, as epochs increases so this is like uh, a modern way of uh, modern way of specifying the learning rate, where learning rate is adjusting itself with epochs number of epochs then we have this class learning rate history which is uh, actually taking uh, which is inherited from this callback class and this callback class contains all the information that we want to store or print or or we want to customize uh, anything uh, so for example uh, the, the function in this learning rate history class in this callback uh, basically in this callback class is on epoch begin so at the beginning of each epoch uh, what do we want to do if there is anything anything special that we want to do uh, we we put that in this this function so uh, in that we just want to uh, take this uh, uh, get give this epoch as an input and we want to um, store this uh, information and we want to print this information okay once we have done that then again we are also uh, defining another callback uh, which is model save callback again which is inheriting from the base callback class uh, we are initializing it and that at the end of each epoch what we want to do is we want to uh, save our model by the file name that we have given uh, as an input uh, okay now that we have calculated that we have done we are done with that then finally another callback is what we are calling loss and error printing callbacks so in this callback what we want to do is that at the end of each epoch we want to print uh, the loss and error information so at the end of the day uh, at the end of this logic uh, we are ready now what we will do is uh, we will uh, define this fi final uh, model name we will define we will define this last finished epoch and then for uh, 1000 this, this is just uh, this is what i was actually working with this takadum uh, library so this takadum library is basically uh, for beautification purposes so it, it shows the progress uh, but let's not get into that detail uh, so you can just delete this line so what we do is we fit this model given this input data uh, and output data and batch size the epoch information and the callbacks is in the form of list so uh, these are different callbacks that we have that we are basically uh, we have uh, th these are the callbacks that we have actually defined then we give the uh, validation data uh, after giving validation data we say that shuffle it uh, after each uh, after after getting each of the batch then we say verbose is equal to 2 means we want the information to be printed out uh, generously then we talk about initial epoch where which means that if the code stops or the the notebook breaks then uh, we could start again from the last finished epoch okay uh, this is done we save the weights after training we load the weights again we make the test prediction and after test prediction we plot this confusion matrix which shows uh, the performance of this classifier okay we inspect the prediction by visualizing it uh, for each of the class for each of the image we have the prediction the score and the true value Fin Finally, we will visualize these convolutions for these three images uh, having index 0, 7, and 26. So the first row is for image 0, then second row is for image 7, and the third row is for image number 26. So then what we will do is, first of all, we will find out for, for which convolutional uh, convolution number we want to uh, look at the convolution. So like, uh, which convolutions do we want to see? Uh, do we want to visualize? So uh, image will be having uh, different interpretations and different visualization uh, at each layer, at each convolutional layer, different parts of the image will be activated. So for, so which convolutional, uh, convolution, at which convolutional layer and which convolution number do we want to visualize? This is important. I will go into the detail of this whole process where we, we are looking at this gradient classification activation maps but i will do it uh, in a separate video and i'll explain this whole process like how it basically works but this is uh, simply consider that uh, uh, a convolutional um, layer a convolutional uh, part of this whole convolutional neural networks which we want to interpret like uh, how does this convolutional neural network work from one layer to another to another to another so we will look at the convolutions of each layer individually and we will interpret that by looking at these pictures so then mm, how do we do it we first of all uh, separate out this uh, layer output 
output in the form of list which contains the output of uh, these uh, layers uh, so for uh, the, the model might have this might uh, this model is i have not i've not counted it but i guess uh, six seven layers so uh, this for each of the seven layer we will be having the output stored in this layer outputs so what we want to uh, what we want to define is another model so this is like defining another model which will be having inputs as model input but the output will not be a single final output the output will be output for each of the layer so we are storing the output of each of the layer so that is what we call activation model so once we predict with this activation model given this image data then what we will be having is uh, the prediction for each of the layer so we will be having the prediction for each of the output layer now for what we want to find out is that in each of the layer whether it be 0, 1, 2, 3, for each of the layer, we want this interpretation of convolutional number 9, 8, the convolutional 8, 8 convolution in each layer. We want to visualize that for these three different data set. So this is like finding out for how many layers. So this is like 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is uh, F1 will be containing for the first layer outputs. And this, this will show the image of the activations of 8th convolution in this first layer output so this will happen for the second and third image and then we will uh, go then we will come to this first out uh, first layer output and within that first layer output we will be storing this eighth convolution uh, uh, represent uh, showing this eighth convolution uh, image so this is how these images are are uh, what we call uh, these images are shown so in these images these color values represent the intensity of activations and we can see that there are some parts of the images which are more brighter than the other and different layers and in different convolutions uh, for 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 first layer uh, there might be uh, this the, the whole thing is like uh, the whole thing is very blurry because these images are very small so we cannot interpret it and i cannot explain it in detail but in the future video will i'll be which i'll be making on classic gradient classification activation maps uh, we will be discussing this part where we will be looking at uh, initial layers uh, actually capturing the edges and the later layers capturing uh, the more com complex features of images uh, and 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 uh, this is what this is uh, this is why we uh, call that convolutional neural network cnns go from uh, simple to uh, learning go from learning simple to complex representations uh, so i guess this is clear now